115 kilometers north of Tokyo, lies the small town of Tokaimura, the site of the JCO nuclear fuel processing facility. In 1999, two workers were manufacturing a small batch of fuel for an experimental fast breeder reactor. They should have used the procedure shown in the top of the diagram. Instead, they used the procedure shown in the bottom. And the final step was carried out in a small squat container instead of a tall cylindrical one. This change in geometry altered the amount of radioactive material required to reach criticality. The workers added the fuel to this container using a funnel and a bucket against all protocols. Person A, Mr. Ruchi, held the funnel as person B poured bucket after bucket into the container. On the addition of the seventh bucket, there was a smack and then the blue glow of Cherenkov radiation as the container's contents went critical. When that happened, high energy radiation composed of neutrons and gamma rays smashed into both workers. The sodium in their bodies captured a neutron and became sodium-24, an unstable isotope. This subsequently decayed to magnesium-24 by beta minus emission. This completely altered the salt balance of their bodies. Nobody had any idea the amount of radiation that the workers had been exposed to, but the presence of sodium-24 told doctors that they had been exposed to neutrons. Chromosomal studies were carried out in the bone marrow of Mr. Ruchi. Not a single chromosome could be identified that shattered like glass. There should be 46 pieces of DNA in this picture, representing 46 chromosomes. In fact, there are over 60 separate pieces of chromosomal fragments. Damage to chromosomes of this magnitude suggests that he received approximately 17 sieverts, and his colleague, Mr. Shinohara, had received 10 sieverts. Both doses would be fatal. The first major problem to be treated was the complete destruction of bone marrow and his ability to manufacture blood cells. Because with no white cells, Mr. Ruchi was at risk from infection. His sister was used as a donor and peripheral stem cells were collected and transplanted into Mr. Ruchi. Unexpectedly, after the graft had taken, it was found that his sister's cells showed chromosomal damage as well, even although they had never been irradiated. Two explanations were put forward for this. First was that the radioactive decay of the sodium-24 was causing further chromosome damage, and the second was that free radicals from dying cells were causing the damage to the chromosomes. The radiation damage to Mr. Ruchi's body was absolutely devastating. The basal layer of his epidermis had been destroyed. No new skin cells would ever be produced. His skin began to slough off. Again, his sister was a donor and a piece of skin from her was sent for culture and then used to graft onto Mr. Ruchi in an attempt to reduce fluid loss and protect from infection. Unfortunately, the amount of fluid loss from the surface of Mr. Ruchi meant that the small graft fragments floated off. Mr. Ruchi's problems went deeper than just the skin. His internal organs slowly failed, manifested initially by profuse watery diarrhoea and then bloody diarrhoea 
and then hemorrhage from the gut as the lining is left off. The destruction of muscle tissue beginning in the right arm resulted in high levels of myoglobin and this caused damage to his kidneys. More gruesome was the fact that as the muscle tissue died, it slid from his bones and Mr. Chi was being slowly skeletonized. This image shows Mr. Chi in hospital. On day 59, Mr. Chi suffered three cardiac arrests over a period of 49 minutes. Although his heart was successfully restarted, from that day forward no response was received from his pupils and his kidneys stopped producing urine. And the lack of blood flow during these arrests had caused further damage to his kidneys and liver. By day 63, Mr. Uchi was requiring 10 litres of fluid per day to replace fluid loss from the body surface and the massive intestinal hemorrhaging and to bolster his clotting functions. Even with fluid replacement, his blood pressure couldn't be maintained without drugs. But these resulted in vasoconstriction of his extremities. His fingertips blackened. Mr. Uchi's white cells began to decrease again and it was found he had haemophagocytosis where his own macrophages had begun to destroy his red and white blood cells. On day 81 his family were informed that a do not resuscitate notice was recommended by the medical staff and they agreed. On December the 21st, 83 days since the accident, Mr. Uchi's pulse and blood pressure fell and then he flatlined. With no response to cardiotonic drugs, his blood pressure crashed. Mr. Shinohara's medical progress was not as well recorded. However, these photographs do show the changes to his face from admission to in hospital. The desquamation of Mr. Shinohara's body was more extensive, 70%. However, the skin grafts took and they were able to recover most of his body with skin. Mr. Shinohara's symptoms manifested in the same order as Mr. Uchi's, but more slowly. After contracting MRSA pneumonia, Mr. Shinohara died. A documentary film of the case won a Golden Globe Award. Mr. Uchi, as a young man, could never have imagined the fate that awaited him. <laughs>